All right. What's up, tycoons? What's up, traders? Today's video is going to be straight to the point. We're going to be taking a look at TLT, giving a market update, taking a look at some other bonds, and also including ZROZ. Uh, the reason being is we had a request in one of the last videos to start including ZROZ in the bond market update videos. So I'm going to go ahead and be doing that because I do viewer requests every single week. All you have to do is comment down below on which ticker you're looking at and let me know you guys would like to see it in the video. I'll be happy to make a video on it for you as soon as I can. I got about four or five year requests for next week that'll be coming out and then I'll be getting to the rest. Okay. So uh, straight to it, TLT, everything is going exactly to plan. Okay. It's playing out very perfectly. If you've been watching the TLT videos, we've been having this structure uh, for the past month or two uh, that I've been making these videos and it's all working out well. So what we're doing in orange, we have our large macro structure that we are tracking okay it's a five wave move to the downside all right and this a wave the c wave and the e wave down here these are all what's known as five wave impulsive moves and your b and your d are abc corrections right so you have the impulsive moves to the downside you get a correction to the upside and then you continue um you know with an impulsive move to the downside so if we zoom in, what we can see is that it's been doing that and it's also been respecting our Fibonacci retracement levels as well, specifically the 61.8, the 50 and the 38.2. Those are the three major retracement tools that you want to use. You combine all these things together and it really gives you a good thesis on how to trade the market, right? So you see we have our uh, five wave impulsive move to the downside. We got one, two, three, four, five. All right. And then we get an ABC correction wave up and we come up to our major retracement levels. We uh, find resistance specifically on the first one. We found resistance at the 50 percent retracement level to the exact level. Right. And then we continue that move to the downside with another five wave impulsive move to the downside. Right. We can see we get one, two, three, four, five again. Right. One, two, three, four, five. And we complete our C wave down. We get an ABC correction wave to the upside. And look at what it does again. It comes exactly up to our major retracement level by using the fibs right here at the 61.8 at 109.72. TLT tops out. That completes our D wave. And we have started our wave one, two, three, four, five down of E. All right. Um, so things are looking pretty good. I mean, you know, this stuff has been drawn here, as I said, for the past month or two on YouTube uh, that we've been looking for this wave one down. We came down. We were looking to see if we were going to get a look above and fail, right, and break this trend line and come down below. But I kept mentioning that, you know, uh, the past week or so, I've been calling for, you know, some type of pop and drop, right, or a bull trap possibly. And I think that that's what we're in right now. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't continue higher. We most definitely can continue higher. Specifically, we have a gap up here to fill at 106.33. Uh, but the reason that I'm saying it could be some type of a trap ultimately is because we've been tracking the structures. I just showed you guys all the other previous waves. We're on our other final wave. We came down and we perfectly came down to our wave one target. We bounced off this trend line. Everything's making sense. Uh, we got the jobs report today. All right. And we also got PMI. PMI came in lower than expected, meaning, you know, the general thesis that, hey, inflation is cooling down. Right. We it seems we have hit a temporary peak. Um, you know, that may not be the permanent peak, but, you know, for the past two, three months, you know, it seems that inflation is coming down. And as a result, we're seeing some positive movement in the bond market in anticipation of the Fed possibly cutting rates. Right. But look, we've already started our wave two up. All right. So that's what we've been tracking in the past couple of videos. You know, we've been going up. I've been calling for a slight bounce. Um, you know, we could extend this up here again to 106.33 and we could possibly even come up higher. Right. This wave two can get extended. Remember, these drawings were here before we even started the downtrend when we were in our ABC wave up. So, you know, I may have to adjust these lines a little bit to perfectly correlate. But ultimately, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if next week we get some more bullish activity. Uh, I really wouldn't be surprised at that. Now, I'm being very patient, right? The reason being is because I don't know where this wave two is going to top out. This could be the top exactly right here today. If you're a little confused on what these blue boxes are, okay, these blue boxes are gaps on the daily chart. Gaps on the daily chart fill about 90% of the time. The big question is not if they're going to fill. The big question is when they're going to fill. So I specifically chart them up in a nice blue box. So that way they're on my radar and they're really good day trading and scalping opportunities, right? Once you see this gap starting to fill here, you can take a position to see if the gap is going to fill and 
um, you know, just look to take some profits, right? And then none of this is financial advice. I'm just giving you guys some data based information and showing you guys what I think possibly could happen in the market. So, you know, there is a potential. We have another daily gap up here to fill uh, right here at our major resistance level at 106.33. Wouldn't surprise me if we go ahead and fill that gap. That would make sense. Um, and that could complete our wave two or this wave two could extend a little bit higher, possibly even up to our major level of 109.72. Now, if we break 109.72 and we retest it as support and continue higher, then we could invalidate this structure. Um, so you have to keep an uh, you know open eye for all possibilities, right? And what would happen there is we would actually be trekking a five wave move to the upside, right? So it would no longer be an ABC correction. What it would be would it be a one, two, three, four, five to the upside. Um, so you know the Elliott wave is really nice. Um, and, you know, it's all about just having some patience and letting it play out, letting it develop. Uh, we got our main signal that we were looking for, which is the MACD crossover on the daily chart. You can see right here, we got the crossover and then we got a sharp move to the downside. The MACD is currently curling up and is exactly at the white line right here, the red line. So if we do get a MACD crossover and it crosses over bullish and we start to see momentum keep heading upwards, there's a possibility we could continue head uh, heading upwards in the market to about 109.72. That's going to be a major resistance level that I'm going to watch out for. If we hit that level, we could get a double top, right? And we would look for any bearish divergences. If there's no bearish divergence with the double top, um, then, you know, there's a possibility we could break it and come up here to fill this gap right around 111, 110. Uh, yeah, 111.44 is going to be at the top of that gap. Now, notice in this process, we created a gap down, right? In this in this bounce process, we created a gap down to fill, okay? Uh, and then we also have another pretty big gap down right here to about 95, okay? So, you know, everything's falling in line. It looks like we're going to get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down, um, but nothing's guaranteed, right? We, it doesn't have to follow our structure. The market doesn't do what we want it to do. It does what it wants to do. But you can use this as a guideline uh, to really help yourself out in your trading experience, right? The next one we're going to look at is actually going to be TNX. And we're going to take a look at the 10-year treasury yields. Um, and the reason we're going to do this is because this just kind of shows you guys. TLT is going up, right? So bond prices are going up because uh, yields are going down, right? So the bonds going up when yields go down. And so that's what we're looking at here on TNX. So TNX is looking like it's going to do this ABC structure to the downside, right? Uh, in my videos that I've been covering TNX, right, we had the head and shoulders pattern. This head and shoulders has played out. We found support at our 50% retracement level at 343 all right, and we got an A wave down, we got a B wave up, we topped out exactly right here at the B wave, and we could be starting a C wave down, potentially all the way down to about 2.9. Now, do I think honestly that it's going to go extend this far? No, but you know, things are following the structures. So you just want to see how they're going to play out and just keep things in mind that, hey, this is a possibility. Um, and again, the reason that yields are falling and bonds are going higher is because we just had jobs report data, right? We had non-farm payrolls come out, right? And some of these things are just indicating that, hey, um, you know, the labor market is starting to cool down. It is still strong, but it's starting to cool down, right? And that's what the Fed wants to see. We have Amazon announcing more layoffs. We have CRM, which is Salesforce. Uh, we have them announcing layoffs as well. And this is all music to the Fed's ears, right? And so people are hearing this, anticipating that, hey, um, you know, perhaps at the next next Fed meeting, the, the you know, Jerome Powell is going to take all of this data into account and perhaps pause rates or cut rates. And they're really just trying to price this stuff in. And, you know, what I like to call fight the Fed, right? And fighting the Fed is very tough and it's very risky um, and it's not the best strategy, right? And so the Jerome Powell has really not given any data. And, you know, if you look at the last Fed minutes, they're really focused on the labor market more so than they are inflation um, because, you know, inflation has started to cool down, but they're really just using the job market as a way to say, hey, we're still not going to cut rates. But, you know, that is a possibility. We could pause sooner than normal or sooner than expected, and we could, you know, pivot and, st and really start to reverse rates sooner than expected. So the market's pricing in a little bit of that right now because of the economic data, all right? And it looks like we're getting an ABC down to the downside. Our next 
uh, level right here is going to be 3.43, that level where we bounced at multiple times. Um, you know, we could try to form a double bottom here and get a nice W pattern on TNX. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is HYG, and this is high yield corporate bonds. And this one's pretty nice because sometimes this one um, kind of like uh, precedes, okay, the S&P 500. Now, TLT and, you know, the bond market, those move ahead of the stock market, right? Um, you know, bonds are going to bottom before stocks. I have a really good video coming out here soon where I'm going to go over less of some of the candlesticks and just show you guys some really good data and show you guys how, you know, first bonds bottom, then stocks bottom, then equity, and then commodities, things like that. So you can really understand the whole macro landscape of what we're in. Um, but for right now, you know, HYG could be leading the way that the S&P 500 and the stock market are going to continue going upwards. If you look, we've had six trading days in a row that HYG has gone positive. Meanwhile, the S&P 500, we'll take a look, uh, has been very, very sideways. Now, we did get a very nice breakout today. Um, that's no surprise. But again, yeah, that's HYG. So HYG had six days of going up. And meanwhile, the S&P 500 traded sideways for like two, three weeks in a row before we got this nice pop here. And we ended up filling this gap on the S&P 500 that I've been watching out for. Um, so we'll go back to HYG before we get into the S&P 500. And what we have right here is a break and a retest, right? So we have our rising wedge pattern right here that we were tracking. Um, we got a break below. We're coming up and we're retesting this trend line. So it's going to be really important and critical to see, do we break through this trend line, right? And get a look below and fail and come back into our zone. Or is this going to be kind of a three wave move to the downside where we get a rejection after the retest and continue heading back downwards? Uh, if we look here again, the MACD has started to curl up and is given an entry signal on HYG. And again, sometimes HYG is a little bit of a leading indicator to the stock market, right? And it kind of shows you, hey, well, maybe the, the S&P 500 actually has to catch up to what HYG is doing. Um, if we take a look back at the S&P 500, we can see, all right, on the SPY ETF, um, you know, TLT and SPY trade very, very similarly. And we can see we're tracking the same overall structure, right? The ABC move up to complete our wave four, right? And we're looking for a five wave structure to the downside on the S&P 500. We came here, we found support at our 50% retracement level, 379.15 on the S&P 500. And we've started our wave two of possibly five down on SPY, right? And what we did was we came here, we got a nice strong gap fill, um, you know, this indicates lots of bullishness and we could continue heading upwards on the S&P 500 to finish our wave two um, all the way up to about 396, even possibly to a retest of this trend line around 49, uh, 401. None of that would surprise me, um, you know, so I'm really just sitting on some hands right now. Uh, I'm not really swinging any positions over the weekend, really looking to see what happens on Monday. Do we gap up, right, and, and possibly continue this bullishness, or do we just pull back and was all of this a fake out uh, and a bull trap, right? But ultimately, I do think that, you know, we completed our wave one down, we're starting the wave two up, and ultimately we will get a three, four, and a five down um, you know, to really bring some more pain to the stock market. Okay. I've got a lot of reasons for that. As I said, I'll be dropping another video with some really good details on it. Um, but I do want to say, you know, if you are having trouble trading in the market, this is screenshots of all of our profits, uh, from this week. Right. Uh, and this is like just this week alone. This is like from some of the people in the discord, right. Um, you know, 50% trades, 47% trades, 50%, right? 129% trades, 144%. Um, I even got a 400% trade this week. Uh, that was pretty nice. So if you guys want to join the Discord, you want to trade with us, you want to get my live market updates, right? And, and take a look at the things that I'm looking at while things are happening in the market. So that way you can have a better idea of, you know, what I'm really day trading, what stuff I'm swing trading and really gain access to the plethora of knowledge. All right. There's there's lots and lots of data resources in there uh, just besides my analysis and the other admin member analysis. Right. We have three admin traders on there as well, uh, besides myself to really guide everybody and help give somebody some insight to the market. Um, you know, just use the link in the description below. Use code Zachly specifically for a discount, like the channel name Zachly Trades, and you can get a discount on your membership. Okay.
Um, but enough of that, right? We'll hop back into the video uh, and we'll go back to over here. And the next thing we're going to look at is the ZROZ, okay? Z-R-O-Z. And Z-R-O-Z, uh, very similar, right? We have a wave one down, two up. Z-R-O-Z is much, much more gappy, right? So we have three gaps to the upside right here. Now, something to keep in mind is, you know, a half gap fill is a little bit bearish, right? So instead of like filling the complete gap right here, we only filled about half of this gap. Um, now, we may continue filling the rest of the gap, but if we start to trade below this gap, then that could be, you know, this is a little bit of a bearish signal that we really watch out for um, that we've seen happen a few times already historically, um, you know, in the past month. Uh, so, you know, we do have some gaps up to fill, right? We have a gap up to 95 point what's this 95.4 basically we have a gap up to 97.2 and a gap up to 99.8 all right so three gaps up and then we have a small gap down to about 88.70 and then a very large gap down to 81.83 so pay close attention to those i would definitely set some alerts at these gaps as i said these are good day trading opportunities um and really just good stuff to know you know like hey why are we so bullish today why are we coming up this much well we're naturally attracted to the gap right we're going to fill these gaps about 90 percent of the time the big question is when right and so you want to be a part of the action when they actually start filling them because you don't know if it's going to fill the ones to the upside. You don't know if it's going to fill the ones to the downside. So you can be non-biased and look to play both of them. Now, you know, we did have this bearish structure right here and really just trading down ways, right? In this bearish channel right here, super, super bearish, uh, a very negative slope right there. Not really going like this, right? It's just super, super straight down. We did get the breakout, right? And we're seeing a slight move to the upside. So we had a nice breakout. It's going to be really interesting to see if this follows some of our other structures with a one, two, three, four, five down, or, um, you know, if this thing can, can stand, extend higher and come up to fill some of these gaps up here closer to 100. Um, so that's really what I'm looking at uh, when it comes to ZROZ. And then pay attention to the MACD, right? Yes, we have gone bullish. We have got a breakout, but we didn't get a MACD buy signal. And the MACD red line is not trading above the white line right here. So we haven't really confirmed bullishness yet, right? Um, yes, we, again, did have the strong move, the strong breakout, but was this a breakout fake out? And we're going to continue trying to head back down lower. Uh, the main levels that I'm watching right here for support are going to be 92.69, 89.80, and 86.91. Those are all key areas where we can bounce. Um, you know, if we come down here, we could bounce there. And if we break through these levels, right, we could come down to 86.91 and try to bounce there. All of these are going to be really three important levels. If we break through these levels, we're going to get that gap filled to the downside, most likely right around 82. Um, so pay attention to the MACD. The MACD sell signal and the MACD buy signals are very important. Over here, we got the MACD sell signal right on this candlestick. And you see shortly afterwards, we got a very strong move to the downside to our major support level. We found that support right around 86.91 and got the move upwards. Um let me see what else we can take a look at. Let's look at silver and gold. Okay. We're going to look at SLV. Um, and the reason we're looking at this is these things have been very, very bullish here lately. Um, so it's going to be real interesting to see what's going on and, and what type of structure we're going to have. These have been really good hedges against the stock market here recently uh, and really a good hedge against the dollar. So if you're super bullish on the dollar and you're super bullish on the stock market and you want something to kind of hedge your position with, Silver and gold have been working as a pretty good hedge uh, in that time period. So we'll take a look. And just like all of the other ones, once we got the MACD sell signal, we had a nice move to the downside, right? We got the MACD sell signal. We pulled down. We filled this gap right here, okay? Um, just like in a lot of the videos, we're filling the gaps. We were watching this rising wedge pattern, okay? We got a breakdown. And just like HYG, we're retesting this trend line right here. So it's going to be real interesting. Are we going to get some type of three wave move uh, to the downside, possibly to take silver back down to the 1850 area? Or are we going to get a continued one, two, three, four, five wave pattern up and try to fill these gaps up here? It has a gap all the way up to 2382 that I can definitely see it filling if silver uh, continues this bullish momentum and, uh, you know, really wants to keep up with this pace. Um, so pay attention to the MACD as well on silver. 
on SOV. If this red line starts to curl above the white line, that's going to indicate we have some good momentum heading to the upside. Um, we'll look at GLD gold real quick. Okay. And GLD it's very bullish as well. A lot of people are super bullish on gold. Uh, we were tracking this rising wedge pattern here. Okay. Um, but really what we did was we broke out of it, right? So we were looking at this rising wedge to see possibly we're get, we going to get a breakdown to the downside to some major support levels, but instead we've actually moved up higher. So gold had a very nice cup and handle. Uh, if we take a look here, you know, we have a very large cup and handle right here. Obviously here's the cup, here's the handle. We got the breakout, right? And we've had a strong move to the upside and we're entering a major supply zone from the past, right? We can see over here, we consolidated very heavily in this period. And this became an area of supply where basically there were more sellers than there were buyers in this area. And ultimately, when we came in these areas, we pushed down, we pushed down, retest until ultimately we got to flush to the downside. It's going to be interesting to see, are these sellers still present, right? The more times you test a zone, the more times you test a level, the more orders get filled, right? So are people going to be placing new order shorts right here, new position, new supply orders, right? Are they going to fill the market with supply in this area? Or are we going to be able to consolidate in here, push higher and try to fill this gap up here on GLD, something similar to SLV uh, right around 179.67. Um, I know lots of institutions, lots of hedge funds are very bullish on gold. Um, so, you know, definitely keep an eye out on it. Right. And just let's say if we do get some type of a pullback here, we could actually end up forming an inverse head and shoulders. Right. If we go to the weekly pattern, um, you, you would be able to see it a little bit more clear. Right. So if we get a pullback, then this is what it would look like. Right. We have our left shoulder right here. We have our head. We have this move to the upside. We get some type of pullback and then we get the move to the upside. We would have a nice left shoulder head right shoulder over here, but we're trading up in this supply zone. So that's what I mean. You know, we could get some resistance here, get a nice pullback to some of our major levels, and then that would form the inverse head and shoulders for us and potentially bring us back up higher. Or we could blow through this supply zone after consolidating for a little bit. We consolidate a little bit over here, um, you know, and then ultimately come up and fill that gap. So pay attention to all of these things. These are all the things that I'm really looking at in the market. If you take a look at GLD's MACD, right, we can see the red line is trading far above the white line. It's got lots of bullish momentum. We just broke out of this rising wedge pattern. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. You know, do we get a look above and fail or do we get a look above retest and continuation higher ultimately to fill that gap? So appreciate y'all watching the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and don't forget to smash the like button.